interesting if you look at parenting, and I'll do parenting in particular because I've written about it in the book, and how parenting's changed. And it started off when I was actually writing for Home Beautiful in the 90s. And they asked me for the 75th anniversary of, of Home Beautiful to go in, look at the archives and write an article. Now this was fascinating because it was the history of Australia after the First World, World War in decor and recipes. And what you saw were all these changes, but the biggest change was in the 70s. And what you could see, and they actually had articles at the end of it, in the 70s, women moved into the workforce en masse. And as they did, they actually brought office decor home. Out went all their parents' brocade fabrics, fussy floral curtains, floral carpets, you know, grey with pink roses, all the nicky nacky tables, and in came minimalism, the office. And the argument I'll put in the book is that that wasn't the only thing that came back. What came back was, and women in particular, because they often do the detailed work, they brought back home, they gave up raising children, you know, feed, clothe, wash behind the ears, go to church on Sunday, and what they started to do was manage them for an outcome. <laughs> and they started, you know, they have expectations, and a very upmarket outcome too, often. But here's the flaw in all of this, which I love, and I'll just read you this section of the book, because... What happened is there's one huge flaw in trying to manage children. You can't sack them. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fabulous if you could say, senior management, that is mummy and daddy, have decided to restructure the family. <laughs> and even though you are a self-directed, energetic two-year-old, we have decided to let you go. <laughs> we will write you an appropriate reference so you can apply for a position in a dynamic, fast-moving family that could fully utilise your skill base. <laughs> so what happens is, children are being managed and parents have to keep on the case because paradox paradoxically, they think they're special, but they have to make sure by managing every little, micromanaging every little thing that goes on. And also, because they're special, they're spoiled in a way that Previous generations think they're spoiled. Three-year-olds get iPads, six-year-olds get phones, eight-year-olds have makeover parties. I mean, what do you do then for a, for, for a ten-year-old? Have a Botox party, you know? It'd actually be quite good, because if you gave them the whole face Botox, they wouldn't be able to complain. Twelve-year-olds get driven in stretch limos to the grade six graduation. Now, get that in mind. First of all, what do you do when they're 16? What do you do? Give them their own stylist and a week in drug rehab. <laughs> but more, more significantly is the fact that they get driven. And not, this is not the, you know, um, the brats of the super rich, you know, Hollywood brats. This is here in Melbourne. Some schools have had to ban stretch limos uh, from the grade six, you know, graduation. And they don't even know their tables. It's not required. They're meant to, but they don't. So what? that's a great celebration of mediocrity. And this is what how the Me Me generation is being produced. Because basically what you've got, nothing is earned, everything's given, and everything's a right. And out of that comes entitlement and all that self-obsession. Mm -hmm.